Hi, this is the Social Good Podcast, where I, Rhys Morgan, interview inspiring people doing amazing things for the greater social good. They can be individuals, charities, social enterprises, places of worship, in fact, any group or individual with an inspiring story, or people doing amazing things. If you know anyone, get in touch on socialgoodpodcast.com. Welcome to a new interview from Social Good Podcast. I'm Rhys Morgan. In the past, I've spoken to social entrepreneurs who want to change the way we shop and how we consume things. And they all say it's about lots of people taking small, manageable actions. And as always, well, nearly always, if there's a challenge or a problem, there's an app. And so Social Good Podcast went out and discovered an app that'll make our work as ethical consumers a bit easier. The app is generated by Geeky Badges, Geeky spelt G-I-K-I. Geeky App Badges is a mobile app that informs you, the user, about the products you buy and the companies you buy them from. Their mission is to encourage sustainable consumption by inspiring people to make small, regular changes in their shopping which are good for them, better for the environment, and fairer to others. I invited Jo Hand, one of the Geeky Badges co-founders, to tell me her story. As usual, all the links are in the show notes. Thank you very much for having me on your show. Uh, my name's Jo Hand, and just over two years ago, uh, James, my husband, and I came up with the the seeds of the idea that was to become uh, Geeky, which is a social enterprise uh, that we set up together. And it, we were motivated by quite uh, quite in quite different ways. Um, I had been a journalist. Um, and worked uh, worked first of all at the Independence and then at the BBC at Panorama and, and the Money Programme and then did some bits for Channel 4 News as well. Um, and during that time, I'd done the odd programme on uh, climate change and subsequently then went to work for a climate change charity. So I was very interested professionally from a sustainability perspective. But then uh, when we had uh, children, I became interested from a, you know, more of a personal perspective. And I, I found it increasingly frustrating that to bring, to, what, to, to, to decide on what we were buying and bringing into our home, uh, it was often very difficult to know whether a product was good for us and also good for the env- environment and what its impacts were. So for me, it was born out of, uh, you know, previous professional experience, but also very much that personal experience. Um, and for James, I think it, for him, he'd he'd been a fund manager, um, and so had worked was very used to working with very large data sets and doing a lot of analysis around it, and also did quite a lot of um, environmental, social, and governance investment. So was interested in in that that side of investment as well. And um, but for him, it was really the fascination around the data and what could be done with the data. So we, you know, chewed the idea around what can we do to help consumers better understand the products that we're buying? Because, you know, when you go into a supermarket or, you know, when you buy anything, really, um, it's often very difficult to um, understand much about, you know, where it's come from, um, what's what's gone into making it what happens to it after you've used it um and this got the idea sort of churning in our minds um uh and i think our starting point was probably a, more around sustainability more about the environmental impact um because that was something that was really important to both of us but when, as we started to talk to friends about the idea it became very clear that for some people that's not a factor so we had had uh, we're having 
a meal with a friend who's who had been vegetarian for a very long time and she said well what about animal welfare that's what i want to know about when i buy meat or any animal derivatives i want to know that the animals have been well looked after and we were you know talking to others who are interested in chemicals in the home you know pe often people with children with allergens wanting to be sure that they were bringing products into their home that weren't going to exacerbate that and it became clear fairly quickly that for everybody, different factors are important. And we decided at that stage that actually, if we could create something that enabled you to get a pretty uh, broad overview of the products that you buy, that would be most valuable because you know people care about different things and people want to know about different things. Um, so we, yeah, we, we, you know, continue to think about the idea and we actually went to my old boss from the climate change charity called CDP that I worked with because I knew he was passionate about trying to help, um, individuals, um, become more sustainable and had, you know, been wanting to do something around this for a long time. Um, and we had a few conversations with him and he said, well, look, you know, many people have tried this. What's going to, you know, what's going to be, what are you going to do differently that's going to make it work? Um, and it was a sort of challenge, you know, throwing down the mantle, you know, come up with a, come up with a solution. And so uh, we, you know, we kept thinking about it. And I think for us, one of the biggest challenges was um, the data, you know, is the information actually out there? So we spent a lot of time looking at that. Um, but we also spent a lot of time having fun conversations about, you know, if we do create this, what kind of organization do we want to create? And we concluded that for us, probably the, the, you know, there were several very important things. I think working with people that we really wanted to work with and making sure that there was a really you know, positive environment in the workplace. And we, took, we you know, joked about uh, companies like Netflix, I think has a no sort of holiday policy. You just basically take, you know, take the holiday you want. And although we don't have that as a policy, we, we, we provide what we hope is generous holidays. Because I think for us, work-life balance is, we think, the most sustainable way to work. And for, for anybody that we work with, we want to make sure that that's, um, you know, very much part of the culture. And um, so we had a lot of fun, you know, thinking about what kind of culture we wanted to create. Um, and also thinking about the, the brand and the sort of persona of the organization that we wanted to create and I think it was really important that anything we do would be positive not preachy in any way empowering um, and provide information that people then can decide how they want to act on it themselves rather than us telling because I think a lot of um, a lot of the challenges of helping people be more sustainable have at times been um, you know, it sometimes made you feel rather, rather frustrated, a little bit hair shirt, you know, you can't, you can't do this and you can't do that. And that is not the best way to help people um, make small changes that, that could have a real impact over time. So I think for us, positivity is really important. Um, so going back to the data, so, you know, the big question for us in terms of can we actually do this was, is the data out there? So we spent a lot of time. Um, and at this stage, James was still working full time and I still had, um, yeah, I still had a young child at home pretty much. So it was, you know, very much part time at this stage. Um, and yeah, I was doing various other uh, sort of part time things as well. So we looked at lots and lots of reports, created hundreds and hundreds of pages of research. And after a long time, we concluded that, yes, we can do this. We found, found sufficient data sources that um, enabled us to do it around supermarket products. And when we first came out with the idea, it was, you know, we, wanted, we want to do this for every product in the world, which, you know, maybe one day that'll be the case. Um, who knows? But uh, uh, we felt that a good place to start because of data availability and because of the kind of information that people were telling us would be useful was, was you know, a day-to-day -day supermarket shop. So that was definitely for us a big moment of uh, celebration, I guess. Yeah, it was, my goodness, you know, we've had this dream and we really think that we can do this now. Um, so James being a... a, a I'd describe him as a bit of a data data uh, data freak. 
um, he absolutely loves working on data and pulling out really fascinating information from the data sets that we've we've pulled together and building a lot of algorithms to be able to uh, draw those different data sets together but you know got busy on creating uh, the, the beginnings of what what was to be geeky um, and while we were doing this we we just couldn't um, we couldn't quite understand or fathom why somebody hadn't already done this we kept thinking well fine that somebody else has done this already which you know for us would have been great in many ways because we're just thinking it needs to be done um, and there are a few examples in the you know specific areas so for example there's something called think dirty in the states which uh, enables you to understand makeup and personal care products and looks at chemicals of concern and they do a really good job on that but it's very focused in that area and there are sites that curate the best, um, you know, best restaurants or best, um, you know, be most green products, that kind of thing. My Green Pod does that very well. Um, and then there's Ethical Consumer, which has been doing a lot of really, really useful work in, in this space for a very long time. But there was nobody really doing what, what we wanted to do. So um, it felt that, you know, we were, it was the right time. And um, we we continued uh, with the with the data crunching, and it became pretty clear pretty quickly that we really needed some uh, tech expertise because neither of us came from that background. Um, and we started looking for a developer. And this, as anyone who works in the tech world will probably have found, that they're not they're not easy to find. Um, so we. You know, kept on searching and then James was talking to a work colleague of his I think who said oh well, you should talk to this guy and then he went to talk to another guy and you know it was just a third or fourth uh, contact was introduced to a company in Bristol called Simple Web who um, are basically uh, you know they build uh, lots of tech digital products for, for people um, and James spoke to them and um, and then we you know they sounded excellent and he wanted to, we wanted to get some references so totally coincidentally they they sent him a reference from somebody who he hadn't seen since university but who had set up a a um, little bit of business called Olio um, her name's Tessa Cook and um, which which does really great work around helping to reduce waste and so James gave her a ring and she said yeah these guys are great you should work with them and that was it really so then we started building the app with simple web um, and it was a bit hairy at the beginning because uh, the first meeting went you know well and this is what we want to do um, and then I think everybody went away and thought about it a bit and it became clear that what we wanted to do was very big and very ambitious in terms you know from a tech perspective um, in terms of you know once everybody starts thinking about it a bit more it was a lot more complicated than, than we'd initially thought um, and we were very fortunate to have a volunteer who'd who was a sort of genius coder who we talked to throughout this process and he said look this is not uncommon just scale it back to the very bare minimum of what you can do and build something and so James paired it back and paired it back and uh, we ended up eventually after a few you know, hairy moments with a basic prototype um, which worked which was um, yeah that was again a real moment of celebration and that's something i think we've learned through this whole process that you've got to celebrate your successes because there are many challenging times if you don't celebrate your successes you'll uh, you know lose sight of what you're trying to achieve sometimes um, so so briefly just to interrupt uh, yeah. Diana, sorry i'll try not to do this too often um where how long did it take from how long do you, do you say to people, so when did you get your first prototype out there? Uh, from what, from when we first had the idea? Yeah. Can you break it down? I would it say down, it was probably or? about, I'd say from when we first had the idea, probably about 18 months. And from when we actually started working on it properly, it was probably nine to 12 months, something like that. And the, that, and the first prototype went out well that just went out to 10 to 10 that went out to 10 people i mean it was very basic oh, um, right. 
And so that went out to 10 people. And um, my old boss, whose name is Paul, who was one of our testers, he said he picked up his phone nervously and, um, you know, was a, put, a, put, the, put the barcode underneath. And the moment that the scan worked, he said he felt this moment of elation because he, this thing actually works. It was like, you know, I've scanned, used so many barcode scanners and half the time they don't work. Mm. The fact that this one did work, he said it gave him a real sense, that actually, maybe this is achievable, maybe we can do this. Um, so that was, you know, that was great. I mean, there was, some of it was a bit confusing, which we knew at the time, um, but it was a really valuable process to go through. And uh, an interesting conversation I had with one of my close friends who, um, uh, she scanned a product that she bought for her kids thinking it was healthy. And she scanned it and it came back as not healthy. And she said, well, that's just rather frustrating and depressing, isn't it? Now I feel really bad. And that was what gave us the idea of uh, introducing alternatives because actually you don't want to create a problem for people. You want to create a solution. So uh, that, that way the alternatives were born and they've been, you know, I think that's been really helpful to people. Um, and after that, that was when we, after the feedback from that very initial prototype, we then built what in the what in the jargon is called the beta, which is basically our next next stage for testing. Um, and we did that with Simple Web again, and that went out to about a hundred uh, testers. And that was really something that we were beginning to feel really very pleased with, and feeling, gosh, this could actually go out to the market now. And we surveyed all of the people who'd used it and talked to a lot of them and got some really useful feedback, which then fed into the, um, the prototype, oh, sorry, which then fed into what became uh, the app that is now out, out in the public. And I think throughout what was one of the things that really helped us get to this stage was all the volunteers that we had who just, people who just felt that this was a really um, important thing to be doing and who fell in love with the idea and wanted to help. So we had quite a few coders who helped um, come up with some of the, the solutions to how we were actually gonna make, make the data work. Um, we had some researchers who I would used to work with, Chris and Layla, they helped us with a lot of the research. Um, a lady called Steph, who was the wife of one of James's um, uh, former work colleagues who was great on food and nutrition uh, and then we even found um, some Brazilians who we never met but we used to talk to via Skype in, um, in an advertising firm who did out all our branding for us just because they loved the idea and that's something that's been really a wonderful part of it that people fall in love with the idea and they really want to help and we've met all sorts of fascinating really committed people who have who have made made a real difference i think yeah there's another guy called jp who's this effervescent argentinian who's an app uh, product expert and he really helped us get through that beta stage of working out what people wanted and what the app should do and i think all of these different skills coming in to help us has been you know invaluable um and that yeah i think that so that got us to launch in may which uh which was another moment of celebration that would be may of 2018 tw oh right yeah so literally only last month at the time of recording exactly that's right so that was when it when it first went out yeah to, to the public on the app store so i being an android user can't use it but i can roughly see how it works but let's say you're an iphone user you're going uh, up and down the let's take uh, particularly um, what my i don't know let's take the cereals aisle so i guess if i scanned coco pops what would happen it would come up blaring lights uh, <laughs> the bad fairy would come down on me like a ton of bricks and point me towards the um, muesli or the porridge or the brand um, even worse. Is that, is that how well, it works? Uh, I would say I it's definitely. A yeah, we definitely. Tr it, it's designed not to be judgmental in that way. So there aren't any bad fairies. Um, it would, um, if you scanned any cereal, it would return a number of badges. So basically, what you do is you get, find the barcode, put it under your phone, uh, it returns. On the screen which product it is and the number of badges it's got out of i think cereal is either out of six or seven um, and 
then you can go into further, you know, press the screen, you go into further detail, it will tell you which badges it gets. So for example, it could, so within um, healthy health, we've got a uh, healthier option. Um, has it got additives in? Uh, is it free from chemicals of concern? Uh, that would that would apply to non-food products, the chemicals of concern. Um, within sustainability, it's around responsible sourcing, carbon footprints, is it UK made, those kind of issues. And then within uh, fairness, which um, currently covers animal issues. So in there we have animal welfare and animal testing, but over time we'd very much like to include workers' uh, conditions and that kind of information, which obviously is really important to many people. Um, so it would tell you how many badges the product gets and then and why it, why it did or didn't get them. So, for example, if it has additives, it would tell you which additives it, it, um, it contains. And then it would give you alternative suggestions, which you may or may not like or want to buy they're quite they're quite varied the, uh, the alternatives so you know there there are some very direct uh, swaps and some of them are a little bit more you know eclectic bit bit a bit of a different uh, take on things and and i think um you know that's give that gives people ideas as to what you know what other things they they might choose if they decided that they didn't want to buy this product do you have any plans um, for the next, I don't know, 12, 18 months to develop the app? I, I bet at, at, I don't know, dinner parties, social get togethers or, or emails back to you, what uh, small businesses get the feedback of, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? Why don't you do the other? You know, uh, what, what sort of feedback have you had? Um, yeah, no, we have had lots of plans. I mean, we've had some really, fantastic feedback and we at the moment I'm spending a lot of time talking to users on a one-on-one -on -one basis to really understand how they're using it which bits work for them which bits don't uh, and we're also doing a survey as well to understand those those same um, issues um, in terms of the I'd say the the I think the two bits of feedback that stuck with stick with me most are after when we did the beta test we we did a survey with all of the users and 60 percent of those said that they'd already made a change to a product that they bought as a result of using geeky which we were delighted about because it showed this 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 can actually work and can help people buy more sustainably and more healthily um and also people said it's addictive which was which obviously showed it was it was helpful and i think what we also found was that people often use it at home so you might scan the old product in the supermarket but actually it seems people are more likely to go around their cupboards or their fridge and scan at home and get a better understanding and then maybe make a change after that when they next go and buy a product um, and in terms of the future so Android is one of our highest priorities. We really want to build the Android and that's that's something that we need to get funding for. And um, But we decided that it was better to get something out there um, as, as an iOS app to start with so we could see what's working, uh, see what people like, and then build the Android as a result of that initial feedback. Um, the other areas that we're really keen to develop in the next year we want to do a sustainable palm oil badge because i think palm oil is something that people are increasingly interested uh, and, and uh, interested about and want to understand better and also better plastics badge again for the same reason because there are a multitude of plastics that are used um, and it's often really hard to understand um, the impact of those and how recyclable they are and what happens to them after you've used them so i think if we can help people with that that would also be really helpful um, and then we'd also like to at the moment all of the badges are looking at product level but I think people also often want to know well is the company that makes this product um, aligned with what's what's important to me so we're looking at developing some company level badges that would would apply to the product so for example I might be buying a you know a box of cereal and, and I, I'd like to know or People might want to know, well, is the company that made this cereal a carbon conscious company, for example? Are they effectively managing their carbon emissions? Um, and those are, those are areas that we're looking at at the moment. 
we look forward to that. Um, you're on, you, you have a website, you're on social media, links will be in the show notes for everyone. Um, let me think what else, oh yeah. Um, so you're, a, 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 is quite a number of people have been drawn into your network uh, as a result of previous jobs and the work you're current, you've done and are currently doing on the app. Um, how do you make money? Who pays for all the coffee and the Skype and the computer and, and all the rest of it? So at the moment, we've been funded solely by grants. Um, and that's something that, um, you know, I think we've been very fortunate that a couple of uh, charitable uh, trusts have donated to us, which has been great. And we, we were so desperate uh, when we first uh, came up with the idea to get to the prototype uh, the, the, the prototype stage that James and I actually decided that we wanted to pay for that because we were just so wanted to see if it could could work um, but uh, that's the, the grants are obviously not going to last forever and we will have some social investors and over time there are lots of different ways that we think that we could um, generate revenues around the data but for us the social mission really is front and foremost of everything we do and we need we need to create a sustainable sustainable business model such that we can employ people and pay for the tech etc but i think that that's obviously very important um, but we're doing this for the social mission that's that's very much our motivation for doing it you're structured as a straightforward limited company, I notice, or you told me before the interview started. Uh, some of our listeners would be going, well, why aren't you a kick? Why aren't you limited by guarantee? Do, do you want to um, Yeah, sure. So when, Yeah, so actually when we first came up with the idea, we were considering being a charity. Um, but uh, we had discussions with the Charity Commission and it became clear that that wasn't going to be the best model for what we really wanted to achieve in terms of making it clear to um, to users how products compared, which inevitably meant that some products would would um, be showing as awarded more badges than others, and that was something the charity commission didn't feel comfortable with. Um, so we uh, decided that social enterprise was actually going to be a much better structure for us. And because there's actually no clear uh, legal uh, definition or, or um, structure for a social enterprise, you just we just used a standard um, company structure, but we are certified as a social enterprise and within our articles of association we have a very clear social mission written into those which is you know sits front and center of everything that we do and there's also restrictions on any dividends that we can pay so that the majority of the profits have to go back into the company. So uh, a social enterprise in all but name and um, cheap to register. Well, it's so, it actually is a social enterprise uh, by name as well. Well, yeah, sorry, but uh, not the kick or the... Um... Not, yeah, it's not the community interest company. That's right. No, we're not a community interest company. Cool. Thank you so much. Um, I think we've come to the end of the, uh, the, the sort of app-related questions, unless there's something you want to add, and I'll cut and paste in. No, I think that's... Um, no, I think that's, that's everything. Okay. I, um, are you both, do you, uh, you and your husband work full time at the business? Uh, yes, so James does. I work, uh, I'd say, probably about 80%. Okay. And the rest of the time I'm looking after our children. How many? Two. Are they allowed to clean chimneys and um, <laughs> test the products? Or? Well, they do. I have to say, they do love scanning. So often when we go around the supermarket, I set them a little task of, you know, find me a healthy cereal or go and find some biscuits without additives. And it's surprisingly effective for making the supermarket trip a more pleasurable experience for everybody. Yay. And you don't have to buy them um, sugar laden confections at the end? 
Well, no, because they, they want to buy the stuff that gets the highest number of badges. Mm -hmm. So it's actually been quite an effective way to choose all sorts of um, products that I, that I feel very comfortable about. Download the app now if you're a parent <laughs> of any child under the age of whatever. <laughs> um, hurry now to the iTunes store. Um, just a couple of fun questions. Um, beverage of choice, tea, coffee? Coffee. Coffee. Um, yeah, fully caffeinated coffee. Fully caffeinated coffee. Just, just like any tech people. Good stuff. Um, scone, scone. Scone. Cream jam. Oh, yeah, I think if I'm pushing the boat out, I'd definitely go for both. Definitely on a and, nice and Saturday afternoon. Shorter. Cream first. Oh, okay, okay, we're down. Fair enough. And uh, lastly, Gareth, Gary Vaynerchuk, yes, no, or some other. Yes, I I like him. Cool. And uh, I, I don't always remember to ask this question. Do you have a, a particular hero? motivator somebody that or something that make yeah somebody that i, I, I think like them uh, i think i'm lucky to have had two one mentor in my life who was a man called melvin marcus who was a journalist who gave me lots of advice into getting into journalism and i still sometimes see now and paul dickinson my old boss who's now a director of, of geeky has always been an inspiration to me because for him, everything's possible. And that is a wonderful attitude to have in life. Great. Uh, cool, I think that's that. Good. Well, thank you so much. It was a no, thank you. pleasure talking I... to you. How many downloads do you get? Uh, so we've had, uh, we're, I think it's about uh, we're well about two thousand seven hundred when I last looked, um, which we were pretty pleased about for the first month. And um, we yeah we got some really great coverage in the Evening Standard and the Times and the Mail Online, and that was a really great way of yeah getting it out. Um, so yeah, I can't promise to have that, that impact, but um, <laughs> we'll do our best. Cool. Um, Lovely. Well, thank you so much. And no. um, would you, will you, uh, will you just, what happens? Do you uh, send it over or you just I let me know when, probably, you, when you put it out? I, will, I think I'm going to send, I'm tr going to try and send it back to you and say, um, and, and, and give some, because it's just me on my own. I tried getting my wife involved to double check because she's always going, hey, you haven't washed this up properly. I haven't done that thing properly so i thought well i'll make the same mistakes with my podcast won't i so um but it's just me so a second pair of ears is always good and i think sure. um after some feedback from other people uh, i think i might do uh, uh especially if you're a journalist you might make a better job than this yeah that's a really good idea thinking it through i will um i've got several interviews in the pipeline yet so we've got plenty of time for me to um get rid of the real bad ums and ahs and the bit yeah. at the beginning and the bit at the end and then mm. you can go oh i didn't express that very well um and also you might go there was a bit at the beginning where i could see you and your microphone and your hands were getting in the way and some oh, were they uh, yeah. if you listened to, uh, i could make perfect sense of what you were saying but if you listen to yourself and, mm. and pretend you have a i don't know a, a relative with hearing difficulties would they be able to hear it yeah, yeah. is okay. it good enough for you if it's good yeah. enough for you, then it'll be good enough for the listener. Okay, lovely. Well, that sounds great. Yeah, we'll just send it over whenever and I'll listen to it. Cool. Um, good. That's it. Thank you very much. Have a great Excellent. day. Oh, it's a pleasure. Yeah, you too. Nice to talk to you. Take care. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye.